So let me tell you who I am. My name is Norm Coleman, and I'm a medical radiation oncologist whose primary job is with the National Cancer Institute that actually pays my salary. So at the National Cancer Institute, I run the radiation research program, um, and I still run a molecular radiation laboratory, so I really understand a lot of the basic science behind radiation. Um, I do understand um, people's fear of radiation. As I said, there's, there's a bad thing about radiation and a good thing about radiation. The bad thing about radiation is you can't see it. The good thing about radiation is you can actually measure it, and it's one of the few environmental toxins you can actually know what it is you're dealing with. Um, I, th I think a lot of the radiation now is really barely over background. Um, the main trouble with, with iodine is you have to ingest it. Um, so if you don't ingest it, it's really not too much of a problem. So I think with, with just um, reasonable precautions, or even not even reasonable precautions, really minimal, you should probably be okay. But again, it's a day-to-day -day thing. Uh, the models are quite spectacular that we're working with. So I think we can have some ability to anticipate what may be happening a day or so in advance, um, which would be, would be good. So if things look like they have to worry about, then we would try to get that information out. The uh, amount of uh, iodine in the food is really quite minimal. Um, again, you can detect things really, really at a sensitive level. There was a, maybe you may have heard, there was a, a sensor in California that picked up some xenon, and they have these sensors set at very, very low sensitivities because they're trying to look for underground testing and other things. So the ability to detect very, very small quantities of radiation is really quite superb. So I think a lot of what's being done now is, is just reasonable precautions. Uh, and I don't think I would probably change what I did much right now, but again, day to day, um, we'll try to keep an eye on things. Yeah, so, so there's two questions. One about potassium iodide, and I think what the ambassador said is correct. They're being very, 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 very cautious and having this stuff around for those who need it. And that makes a lot of sense. There's really no need to take it. For those, I think you probably all know what potassium iodine does. You have hot stuff, hot iodine. The body accumulates iodine in the thyroid and other places, and what you take is a ton of the cold stuff to compete the other stuff away, really to prevent it from going in there. You don't want to take it when you don't need it. If you take too much iodine, you can actually st stoke up your thyroid, so there's no need to do that. Um, at the radiation doses you worry about with pre-existing conditions, you're not even anywhere close to that. Those are when you're getting into 50, 100, 200 rem. Here you're in the milli rem or not even in that range, so you're really way below that. Well, I mean, the, the reaction in the United States has been really quite extraordinary because people are worried about, about any radiation at all. I think the numbers we would use, again, the, the, we use the numbers we're familiar with, we'd use the precautionary numbers that we would use if the event occurred in the United States. Um, I think giving out potassium iodide, it's really early here, but I understand why and it makes sense. To do that in the United States, I think, really uh, is not particularly necessary at this point in time. But we'll follow the same thinking as if we're there and give the same recommendations, again, with with the smart people back in Washington and other places who can help um, look at the recommendations and make sure they're, they're consistent with what um, we should recommend.